And welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. And this is the uh, the player ratings video for Everton's two one defeat against Manchester United. Disappointing day. I was at the ground, and uh, yeah, just a really, really frustrating game after some really good form recently, where you know we've looked really composed, uh, really worked hard, and really managed to ground out some decent results, really, and. Just all of that was just it just wasn't there tonight and that was frustrating. But it it I, I think there's a lot of lot of individuals I see being singled out and obviously that is that is kind of how this video is gonna play out player rating wise. I I don't think it's really fair to single out anyone too much. And we'll get on to some of the, the candidates that Twitter in particular really do seem to have it out for, but I think just as a collective we, we were just all a bit off today and there were a lot of misplaced passes, a lot of, you know, sloppy in possession and United just were just e easily catching us out and, and punishing us. And it, it was it was a bit of a crap game overall, really. I actually think United probably feel they should have won by more, to be honest, because well, we were just really out of sorts for the entire match. Even I, I saw people saying it was once uh, United equalised, but I, I even think... I thought the goal we scored, as good as it was, and we'll get onto that, just kind of came out of nowhere, really. And based on the way the game had gone up to that point, was quite undeserved, even though obviously it was so early on. But we'll get into all that anyway. And yeah, just going through all the players, obviously starting with Pickford, I think you can't really give him anything more or less than a six. I don't really remember him actually making any saves at all, really. I mean, I've looked at the stats, you know, and only actually had four shots on target. Obviously, two of them were the goals they scored. And I remember I remember quite a few blocks, especially in the first half, from, you know, Tarkovsky and Cody, who are who both bad solid games. Of course, we'll, we'll get into them in a bit. But I actually don't remember Pickford being asked to do too much. I don't think you can really blame him for either goal. Possibly, I'm watching it back, maybe could have done a, a tiny bit better for the second. But they were... They, they, it, they, there's no way he can be at fault for either of them based on mistakes that happened earlier, which of course starts so we'll get into later. So I think it has to be a six. Can't really get him any higher than that because he didn't have too much to do. Can't really get him lower than that because he didn't really do anything wrong. It's just a run of the mill six, that I think. Um, Seamus Coleman, I'm going to give a five. Uh, obviously, I was, I was quite complimentary on him last week and, um, I imagine against Southampton, the first game back, uh, filling in for Nathan Patterson, of course, who's, who's going to be out for a few weeks, frustratingly after such a great start to the season. You know, his first real stint in an Everson shirt, and really impressive, of course. And everyone was a little bit worried about Coleman, which I thought was a bit harsh. You can kind of see a bit more now what people meant, especially in, you know, against, you know, the likes of Manchester United are much more aside but a lot more talent in it than, you know, the likes of Southampton, no disrespect to them, of course. But you know, there's there's no doubt about it. Like trying to contain Marcus Rashford is much different than trying to contain Nathan Redmond. You know, and Coleman really did get was get getting caught out a lot. Um he, and you can tell that that yard of pace that he's lost is, is really costing him and against speedy winners like Rashford. Um he's just always going to be caught out really and Obviously, I don't think I don't think Coleman was actually on the pitch when Rashford scored his goal, which um obviously got rolled out quite harshly to be honest. I actually think that's that's what I mean. I think we should consider ourselves quite lucky it was only two one because in my eyes they had a perfectly good goal shorts out, uh, the type of goal that you'd be infuriated if uh um if if we'd scored it and it and it was rolled out. But regardless, Coleman just. Sloppy in possession again, caught out a lot. He's he's just he's just not quite at that pace of the game anymore. And like I, th I think he's not far off turning thirty four now. I think he might be. Um, I said last week that I think he's more than good enough to be our backup coming in for games uh, when obviously first choice Patterson isn't fit. I'm not so sure now. I'm trying not to be too reactionary about about tonight's result because. You know, knee-jerk reactions, ever sort of famous for it. You know, we have one win and we suddenly think our players are the salt of the earth. We have one defeat and we all think, oh, they're all terrible. 
So I'm trying to be a bit middle of the road, but yeah, I, 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 I'm I not entirely sure about Coleman now. And he is a tad bit of a concern, which obviously Lampard himself recognised by moving a Wobi into that position, even though I don't think he's ever played for a little out and out right back in his life. Obviously, he's filled in right wing back a bit, but that's a very different position, obviously, with an extra centre back behind you as well. So, Carmen has to get a five for me. I don't think it's, I think it'd be a bit harsh to give him any lower than that. But like I say, everyone was just about our source, and then Colin was definitely up there. Um, the two centre backs I'm kind of just going to go do together Sarkovsky and Cody. I think they're the only two players who can actually hold their heads up high and, and didn't do anything wrong, really. They had solid enough games. Sarkovsky, in particular, was trying to make things happen as much as possible, as much as you can do in the centre back position. Uh, he was the only one who seemed to have any real composure, didn't seem flustered by United's really well organised press. It must be said, they were very good at cutting out our passing lanes and you know, really just suffocating us out of the pitch. But Tarkovsky was in the bit the only one who was able to kind of break that press, really. And it's a shame, you know, he couldn't have any more influence on the match than that. But yeah, him and Cody, they they did nothing wrong. Uh, they were both composed, solid, and probably a large part of the reason it stayed only 2-1, like I say. So, uh, they only get, they can both get sixes. Obviously, like I say, you can't really give any higher than that in a, for a team that loses a match unless someone really stands out as trying to make things happen, which I don't think they were quite at that level. So, a six for both of them. And then Mikalenko, I feel a little bit harsh about this one. I'm going to give him a five. I actually think he played okay and, you know, didn't do too much wrong, but it's probably more a compliment to Anthony, who, of course, was on that right-hand side and uh, really threatened him throughout the match. Obviously, he gets uh, United's equaliser early on, really well-taken goal. Uh, and, you know, it was just, it was just too quick for Mikhailenko, really. Obviously, he hasn't been caught out uh, through passing and you can't really expect Mikhailenko to react too much to that in time. You know, Anthony's already away by the time he tries to Block the pass. So, yeah, I think he has to he get to five based on our performance. I think that is a, I, I is a little bit harsh, maybe. But, yeah, I, I, there's, not, there's not really too much he did that could justify giving him any higher. So, a five for Michelangelo and similarly as well for Ganagay. I'm going to come out and say it, and I might get a bit of stick for this, but I think maybe we have overreacted a little bit to how to, to, to Gay since he came back saying, oh, he's 10 times the player he was when he left. I, I, I'm I, guilty of it myself, don't get me wrong, but I'm I'm not, based on the last two games, maybe I'm not so sure now. Obviously, you know, that ball-winning bite thing he's got, like, obviously, hands down, our best player winning the ball back by a mile and something we've desperately lacked. But there's people saying that he's ironed out that, you know, the sloppy passing that was kind of a thing when he was here. And that you know, being being in the PSG setup and all that, being around you know, much more technically gifted players, maybe rubbing off on him a bit. I'm not so sure now. It's two mistakes in two matches now. Really, you know, sloppy pass to Awobi, uh, which United cut out and get their equaliser from. Um, he really struggled in that first half. He was getting caught out a lot and just their midfield. You know, Bruno Fernandez, Christian Eriksen, Casemiro. Was just too much for him, really, which is understandable. But you know, he, he's 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 meant to be one of our best players, and you know, he's someone who, against a side like United, you really kind of need to step up. And he didn't. He he actually did the opposite. He was one of our poorer players to have. It's got to be. It's got to be said. You know, I love the guy, obviously, and you know, I'm not writing him off at all. Obviously, he's still one of our best players, but maybe not quite as good as people think think he is. Is what I'm going to say. So it's a five for him. I know I'm going to give a six. Um, and I was toying with giving him a five as well. He was misplacing a lot of passes. Um, and there was also the fact that, you know, we, we know how tall he is. And, you know, there's, there's comparisons to Fellaini. We've been being, you know, young Belgian midfielder at all. Uh, but he's just not that aerial threat Fellaini, Fellaini was, is he? Um, he needs a lot of, needs to improve a lot on his heading. Um he was getting to, he got to several balls, like the crosses or whatever, but just couldn't do anything with the actual headers. So that definitely needs a lot of work. But 
I'm, I'm, I'm giving him a six because he works his ass off. I think, you know, that, that, that's something you can't say about. We were trying. You could see the frustration in the players that just, for so many of them, just nothing was coming off. But that you know, effort alone isn't really going to get you anywhere. You know, you need, you need to be, you know, better, better, have to have better composure and all that. And yeah, and Anna was just a little bit off it today, just like everyone else was really. But I think maybe on I like in hindsight was maybe one of our better players, possibly based on the effort he put in, winning a lot of tackles. He won he was I think he was better at winning tackles than Gay was today. That's what I mean. That's that's the concern for me with with Gay. Um so yeah, I I don't want to get to six and I don't know. I, I, I could I could easily see justification for giving him a five as well. Um, but yeah, I think just about a six for me. And then a Wobie gets a six as well, possibly just for his goal. I actually think he made a lot of wrong decisions today, which is really frustrating based on excuse me, based on of course the starts of the season he's made. And you know, he's 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 like he's he's always been that like reliable one this season, always like receiving the ball and picking out a pass of it. He's, there was a lot more like dribbling and trying to take on players today, and you know, obviously that that ended up catching him him out, and that was how United got their eventual winner in the end from Ronaldo after uh, Casemiro effortlessly won the ball off him with probably trying to do a step over or whatever, and just wrong decisions. And he's it's, it's a shame because he's been so good at making the right decisions, but I, I I'm hoping fans don't get on his back at all. Because there's just no need. He's been so good this season. Um, and, and like I say, he scores a fantastic goal to kick us off. And you start to think, oh, it's going to be another really good day. And obviously, everything after that just kind of peters out, really. But, and yeah, it, 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 a frustrating game for a while. I think he's acknowledged it himself. I think, I think they all have to, really. Um, and of course, being moved out into a right back position, odd decision from Lampard that. I think because you know we've we've known for a while now where we've crossing's not the best. That was kind of the game plan towards the end, especially once Calvert Lewin and then of course Rondon towards the end as well came on. That we really were just trying to send crosses in, but ineffective. And you know, I will be the crossing's still not quite there. Obviously, he got an assist last week from one. It's got to be remembered. In fairness, that cross for uh, McNeil to score against Southampton, but playing in a right back position, you know. He's he's going to be pretty ineffective out there, and especially you know defensively, and that was what ended up uh, leading to that third goal, which obviously was shorts out. But yeah, I won't be getting to six, and it's that is pretty much it's kind of weighed against his goal and how well he's played this season, and how and how well we know he can play. And, and and like you could see again, like I said similarly about Anand, you could see how frustrated he was that just nothing was coming off. So yeah, I won't be getting to six. And then Gordon, he's the main one that I've seen getting pelters, which I still think is a tad harsh. That the, the, the you know uh, there's a lot of people turning on him and have kind of been turning against him a while, especially with all the transfer rumors in the summer, which of course didn't help, but. Yeah, there's no getting away from the fact he was out of sorts. He was probably our worst player today. Um, I just think it's a little harsh how he's being singled out when, like I say, pretty much everyone had a poor game. Uh, and I, I, I think I also have to comment on that really good tackle he made in the second half, which he inexplicably got booked for, which means he misses the next game. Uh, you can't really blame the referee at all for what happened today, but that was a bizarre decision for me. It was a perfectly good tackle. It wasn't unsafe or anything, and and you know we're now we're out a winger for our next game, and you know there's people joking saying, well, maybe he needs a bit of time out or whatever. Possibly, I don't know. I think it's a little harsh to just chalk it down to attitude issues because he's changed his hair or whatever. But yeah, maybe he, I, I it could be argued he maybe didn't work hard enough today, especially with Coleman behind him. I remember Lampard switching them two around and putting Gray out on the right and Gordon on the left, perhaps so. Where he could give a bit of extra protection to Coleman, who, as we touched on, was struggling. But I, I don't know. I think I would like, like don't get me wrong. Gordon gets a five, and like I say, he probably was our worst player today. I just 
I think it's a little too harsh just going in on him when you know you could criticize pretty much anyone out there today, really. Like I say, with the possible exception of the centre backs. Neil Wolpe was similar. Um, I, I, I have a little bit of sympathy for him because, like I said, you could tell he was working hard. He was trying to make runs, getting behind or whatever, and trying to influence the game. He just he just couldn't get a sniff, really. He was shut down at every opportunity. Probably testament to how well United defended. Uh, also frustrating how, how much he was getting riled up as well. You know, he was probably lucky not to get booked because... There were little points where he was, you know, shoving their players and stuff, and you could tell he was getting really wound up. But yeah, just not his day, just like the rest of the side. And Gray, it's the same. I'm gonna give Gray a six because I could tell he was trying to make stuff happen on quite a lot. Uh, but similar to Miles Bay, just could just could not have an influence. And you know, I think Dallow was maybe there for the taking as well. I don't think he actually had his best game for United, so out on the right in the right back position. Maybe Gray could have you know, run at him a bit more, you know, like we were seeing against Southampton where he was really dangerous and, like, really just giving their defence worries. But, yeah, just nothing came off for us today and it was frustrating. It's just one of those games we need to we just make ensure it doesn't happen against Tottenham because, you know, as a, as a ruthless Tottenham side, we saw it last season, last time we went to their ground where we were flat and to get the tactics right. And yeah, it just needs to be a better performance all around, really. I'm not going to rate the substitutions, but I am just going to comment on Calvert Lewin and Ghana, uh, on, on, on Ghana rather. Um, Calvert Lewin, we could, you could see just how much our tactics changed when she came on. And you can, it was kind of a glimpse of what hopefully means we'll be a bit more uh, effective going forward once he's, you know, fully fit and ready to start again. He was that outlook. We were focusing a lot more on getting the ball in. Uh, to the box. Only concern for me is, and it was a concern last season as well, once he came back for his injuries, the timing of his jump still just seems really off, which is odd. You'd think, you know, striker like that, you know, who knows he's such an aerial present, you think it'd be something he'd be working on a lot. On the pre- he had mastered at one point, you know, you think during that season under Ancelotti behind closed doors, he was just such a, a beast in the air. And it's, I don't know what has happened with it, but it's just so off now and it concerns me a bit that I think a lot of him getting so good at that was down to working with Duncan Ferguson who of course isn't here anymore uh, is there going to be a way for him to recapture that obviously we we know we, we know all so well just uh, how good he can be with the heading and like you know it's not completely gone he scored the the famous winner against Palace that you, uh, you you've probably seen <laughs> um, so uh, fingers crossed he can get back to that again and uh, like I say we were we we seem to have a much better idea of what to actually do going forward once he came on which is encouraging and then James Garner as well he came on and looked, actually did look very good nice little touches good good passing um, showing for the ball a lot, a lot as well getting into the right positions which was you know giving, giving United an extra thing to worry about which was good um, and nearly a very, very good goal. Um, actually, just, you know, having a dig. We didn't have many shots today. Um, all today into a save, which obviously led to a flurry of corners once we started to go for it. Actually started to go for it in the 90th minute. So, yeah, definitely want to see more of James Garner. Um, and, yeah, that pretty much sums it up, really. Like I say, there's nothing more to say about that match, really, than just everyone had an off day. And it was just one of those frustrating performances where you know that with a better performance, we definitely could have had them as well as they played. You know, they they weren't they weren't very ruthless in attack. They didn't seem to. They were only through mistakes that they managed to get their goals. And I think on another day we could have nicked a few and possibly got a famous win. And of course, being on a Sunday at seven, that should never ever happen again. Football matches should never be played at that time. And just bizarre, really. Yeah, crap day all round to be honest, but. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. So uh, please leave a like if you enjoy. Comment below, giving your ratings of the players um, and like, you know, which ones you agree with, which ones you disagree with, whatever. Um, and subscribe to the Toffee Blues channel for more Everton content. And we will see you in the next video. Cheers.